pass because I helped organize this and I'm just really tired and disorganized. <laughs> Not applause, a pass is fine. Um, Neve, I'm so sorry. But I'm here. And I'm going to introduce you. Um, Neve B, um, aka Lyric Seal, is a multidisciplinary resistant performance artist, sex worker, disability justice advocate, uh, activist, and punk scholar. They are the great great grandchild of the author of The Velveteen Rabbit. And <laughs> and, <laughs> and their parents are river people. Um, now baby works with Sins Invalid uh, and, and co-founded the Blueberry Jam, a feminist dance club for women and queers. Lyric is a porn star, alt burlesque performer, author, coming out like a porn star, and advice columnist, Slumber Party. They are currently at work on their third erotic dance film collaboration. Um, sorry, dance on film collaboration with Nikki Silver and a book, Taking It Lying Down slash Calling Like an Animal. Neve currently resides in Oakland and is moving to Seattle this summer. Follow them on the things at at Little Beast Hood. You want my words? You want my body? They come from in here. I have been penning my brain thoughts and dancing my body thoughts and singing my soul thoughts since I was six years old. When I was four or so, I performed my own version of Swan Lake for my audience of one, my mama, three if you count the cats. My co-star was a stuffed swan, my ballet bar and movement scaffolding my walker. People love overzealousness, precociousness. It is shocking and interesting that I can presume that my body is something you would want to look at or see move. And amazing that I wanted to be a dancer, born like I was. I didn't begin dancing as a symmetrical flower hacked down by a storm, scattered, scattered, replanted, and learning to grow into dancing again. I always was this way and I become more and more in this way. It's almost like you consider the unlikely possibility of my seamless inclusion more when I say it's a good idea, because I was given the gift of convincing speech. For whatever reason, you believe me. But how much do you believe me? How much do you listen? Is it just that I'm a better writer than I am performer? You believe the writing more when the body is not attached? I'm not saying you all feel this way, but this is the story of the beast, Cupid, and the dragon, wooing captive audience. Listen to me before I show myself to you in the light. I don't have the delusion that I'm ugly, but some of you don't like my body much anyway. Maybe I am ugly enough. How dare I love dance? How dare I love this theater? How dare I love the screen? How dare I love the possibility of loving and accepting my body enough at face value that I could imagine you would love it without me explaining it to you? Without me proving to you first that I deserve to be here. First, I must show you that I am smart enough to know that I am asking for something unreasonable. I am beginning to understand that my art cannot wait for Hollywood or television. I cannot wait for what people think they are ready for. I cannot worry anymore that the shock of my form will kill you or me when we finally get a good look at it. You want my words? You want my body? The words come from in here. I don't want someone less twisted, less ill-proportioned, less smirk mouth, less flashing-eyed and dimpled ass to play me in the movie about my life. <laughs> Recently, a film of mine and Nikki Silver's was requested for curation into a night of short films in Berlin called Pleasure Slash Pain. I do not know whose pleasure or pain in particular, but the lineup looked beautiful. Something by Jack and Mary, too, so I was not even the only disabled creator. The organizer of the event, who is very sweet, 
And I think truly wanted to do my film justice as she told me it was her favorite film at Mix NYC. Notified me after the Facebook event went up that a still from my film was the cover image. I clicked on the link. It took me to the page and there I saw my four white co-stars standing which they do for only four counts of the entire film. For in the world of white fur, they are my puppies, and they serve me and drink for me on all fours always. At first I laughed to see my puppies standing with their raccoon-like face paint and wolf ears erect, naked but for some other things in rope. Then I began to see the palpable not me present in this particular way of advertising my film. It must be noted that in this film, I am very glaringly brown, do not stand for any seconds, and am meant to be somehow the most humanoid of my pack, being the mother or master that I am. Black Cruella de Vil meets a consensual snow queen, meets an American princess Mononoke grown up, but in my absence, I wondered, is my role received more ironically than I meant it? Is it clear to I seek in upright symmetry and snow that I am, of course, the least human monster of the human monsters in my movie? Did their puppy-like antics highlight their innocence and their right to be? While my painted and tattooed face, my darkness in contrast, my crippledness, my curves and angles, my scars reveal my tyranny, my zeal tree, my villainy. The bloody crux of my intention and presentation is my pride and my shame. The root of radical is root, and our roots sting in the beginning as they try to grow. The curator, after being notified, apologized amply for the mistake. It was not her intention to perpetuate ableism or racism in any way. She replaced the image that was originally chosen with one I suggested, in which my sled dogs are in mid-pole of my chariot, and I cackle behind them. It's hard, you know, kitten. I want you to want me, and I want you to fear me. I want you to understand your fear and your want, and I want you to rebel against yourself and your teachers. My words and my body never meant to be at war with each other. They both communicate my desires. They both try, try, try. And yet sometimes when I see that people love what I have to say, or love what another apparently disabled person has to say, what another queer woman of color or gender non-conforming person has to say, what another ugly different, difficult body has to say, and yet you don't have posters of us up on your walls, and yet we do not make it into your dance pieces, your films, your classrooms, your inner sanctums, your plastered representations, I'd say. Who are your invisible theorists? Where do our bodies lie? You want my words? You want my body? They come from in here. Do you know how your teacher stays alive? What she likes to eat, how she likes to touch and be touched. Would you love her if you knew what she looked like? Do you love her only because you know what she looks like and it is okay with you? Who are your invisible theorists? Can't you feel their gnarled hands claw carving the air? We are afraid to relate not just to each other's musings about our embodiment, but to each other's embodiment, to each other's bodies, without pretense. If my words are extraordinary, then my body is too, and it is all also ordinary. It is made of mud. The reason for porn, for me, I think, was so that this body on earth in all its slippery and sticky imperfection would be what you remember. And not just what I have to say about it, because I've been talking right for days, but I don't want to be still. Even when it hurts, and despite my resistance to ableist conventions of senses, I want to be seen in the proverbial sense. You want my words? You want my body. They come from in here.